What's going on guys? Welcome back to part two of our Dominaria set review. Uh, we are going to be going through the entire set, red or black, red, green, uh, lands and gold cards, and then artifacts throughout the entire week up until the pre-release on uh, Saturday night, Friday, Friday night, Saturday morning. So um, yeah, be sure to check back here every at 9 p.m. every night, 9 p.m. Eastern, and uh, see what I think. So I like this card in Limited a lot, actually. Like I said in the White Side Review, I really like Kicker a lot. Um, so we have Academy Academy Drake, which is a 2-2 flyer for 3. That's your standard rate for a 2-2 a flyer in Limited. But for 7 mana, you get a 4-4 four, four flyer. It's expensive for a 4-4 four, four flyer, but it's just an upgrade, right? So, like, I mean, Air Elemental is obviously the premier for Air Elemental and Sarah Angel are the premier 4-4 four, four flyers in Limited for 5 mana. So you have these these cards and they're great but you can't cast them on turn three right so you get to cast this on turn three or on turn seven it, it scales very well which is which is really good a good feature for a limited format um so that like you're not top decking junk you're actually top decking cards that are relevant at, at different points in the game which is just awesome and i think that's the kind of thing that makes limited play more like cube drafting than it is like something like you know rivals of Ixalan drafting Academy Journey Mage, 5 mana for a 3-2. This spell costs 1 less to cast if you control a wizard. Oh, we got a wizard, Daddy. So, 3-2 for 4 mana if you control a wizard. When Journey, when Academy Journey Mage enters the battlefield, return a creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. All right, so this is your this is your traditional um traditional bounce spell. This is your steam this is your uh, ogre savant. This is your aether adept uh of the set which you kind of have to have but it also has like a wizard theme so it's kind of like playing off both of those both of those roles in the set which is nice because they're both very very magic-y um i can see this card being pretty obnoxious if you have several of them against your opponent like you just bounce their guy four mana bounce their guy five mana four mana bounce their guy again four mana bounce their guy again so Dead Eye Pirate as well. Yeah, this is basically Dead Eye Dead Eye Rig, Rig Hauler from uh, Rivals of Exelon. A four mana three two that bounces a creature. Exactly. Sure. Dead Eye Rig Hauler, I believe, could bounce your own guys to your hand, which is nice because you know if they if they had an effect that you wanted to take advantage of again, you know that's that's rewarding. Uh, my opponent definitely killed me from doing that once. I forgot how, but it happened. The Antiquities War. Ooh, that's exciting because that is a uh, major plot point in magic lore. Uh, four mana for a rare, a uh, rare saga. For the first turn it comes into play, look at the top five cards of your library. You may build an artifact among them and put them in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library anywhere. Okay, so basically, this is like basically activating a Tezzeret, right? Look at the top five, put an artifact in your hand. Next turn, look at the top five, put an artifact in your hand. Okay. Artifacts you control Final for the final lore counter. Artifacts you control become artifact creatures with base power and toughness 5-5 five, five, and slime. This is just Tezzeret, right? This is literally just combining two Tezzerets. It's combining the, the plus ability from Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas, and it's combining the ultimate ability of Tezzeret the Seeker. I mean, this deck really has to have a shell for it to be any good. I don't know if it's going to be any good, but... I don't know. This is a card you kind of keep your eye on, right? Like March of the Machines or something where you're like, this card's terrible by itself, but mm, could be good. Arcane Flight. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. The best part of this card is, good lord, the art. The art is amazing. Uh, if this let me draw a card... If this costs two mana and I draw a card, it's obviously Cartouche, but I think that's infinitely more playable. However... <laughs> I mean, we're talking about limited here, obviously. So if you're going to put this on a 6-6, six, six, slap it on there, make him a 7-7 seven, seven flyer. Even if you get in for one turn, it's still very good. So I could see playing this card. I could see this making your deck as your 20, 23rd card. Definitely. So. Artificer's Assistant. 1-1 one, one for one flyer. Whenever you cast a historic spell, scry one. That seems fine. I can get behind that. Eh. Whatever. It's not exciting. It's not exciting. It's cute. It's it could be useful. It's not it's not the worst creature I've ever seen. But like if you're casting these historic spells, I don't know. Maybe you don't really need to be scrying and not a one-one bird. 
Target creature gets negative four, negative zero until end of turn. Draw a card. The only card that the only thing that redeems this card even a little bit is the fact that it lets you draw a card. Um. Otherwise, I really don't know if I want to be spending three mana on this effect. If this was an enchantment, that'd be awesome. Uh, it's very similar to other similar enchantments that I've actually seen some fringe sideboard playing constructed for blue decks that don't actually have a way to do that. So, um, blink of an eye, two mana for a return target non and permanent to its owner's hand. If it was kicked for four mana total, draw a card. This is literally into the royal. The art's pretty cool. And uh, I would actually be surprised if this did not see play and constructed. This looks like this card is great. Cloud Reader Sphinx. 3 4 for 5 when it enters the battlefield, scry 2. That's fine. We're not going to play this in constructed, but I will 100% play this in every limited deck I get it. Coldwater Snapper. 6 mana for a 4 5 hex proof. I might play this in limited depending on how my deck looked. I'm not impressed, unfortunately. I'm a big turtle fan, but this guy's not going to cut it, unfortunately. Curator's Wand. Enchanted Permanent is a hexproof. When Enchanted Permanent leaves the battlefield, if it was historic, draw two cards. That's interesting. So this is just like a delayed divination, right? So for three mana, you put this on your hexproof guy, you're on your legendary guy. Uh, put it on any permanent, so you can actually put it on Historic. You can put this on Sagas, which are guaranteed to leave the battlefield. And then you just draw two when it dies, when, it, when you sacrifice it after the last lore counters on there. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I can see this. I would definitely play this in, in Limited if I had enough guys. Um, even if it's not going on a Saga or on a, on a, on a Historic card, you, like you're just... Enchant your best guy, give it hex hexproof. Enchant your flyer, give it hexproof. Like, it's still very good. I could also see this in standard with some kind of combo. Because just the fact that you're able to draw two cards is pretty strong. Deep Freeze. Three mana. Enchant creature has base power and toughness 0-4. Has defender, loses all of the abilities, and is a blue wall in addition to its other colors and types. This is actually pretty good blue removal. I mean... This is pretty much a blue journey to nowhere, right? Like, it loses its abilities, so it's basically off the board. It has Defender, it's an 0-4, it's a wall. I mean, it's annoying if you have ground guys that you're trying to get through, but if you're just flying over or you have unblockable guys and you just need to get rid of something like a Primeval Titan, it does the job the same way a journey to nowhere does. Except you could potentially bounce this the creature. Right, so if you have a bounce spell, you can get it back to your hand, whereas if Journey to Nowhere, you can't do that. Um, still not terrible, though. I could see this. This this is the fringe blue removal spell I could see coming in from sideboards. So, Diligent Excavator. Two mana for a 1-3. Whenever you cast a Historic spell, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. This is the, this is the token mill card of the set. It's a card that mills your opponent based, or yourself, based on you interacting with the set's thematic card, which here it is, uh, historic cards. So sometimes it's like, if you cast an artifact, mill them for two. If you cast an ally, mill them for two. Here it's like, if you cast a historic spell, mill, mill something for two. So this is a still, still a card that you might be playing in limited as a 1-3 for two if you really need it. Um, it's uncommon, as they usually are, so I don't foresee you getting too many of them. So I don't know if mill is a viable strategy in limited, that being the case. But uh, it's still a 1-3. So. Divination. Draw two cards. We all know what this card is. Surprised it's in here. But eh, it is what it is. Homerate Explorers. Four mana. When it enters the battlefield, target player puts the top four cards of the library into their graveyard. Four cards in limited is a lot. That is, uh, after your opening draw, uh, that is... How much is that? One eighth of your deck. So probably like 15, 12 percent, something like that. It's a good amount. So I can see this guy seeing play. Uh, if you can get a couple of the diligent excavators, is that what it's called? Yeah. So I can I can see you playing this guy. Maybe there is potential for a mill strategy. If there's not, if there are more cards like this, probably just ignore it. In Bolus's clutches, this is a card I'm really excited about. You control Enchanted Permanent. Enchanted Permanent is legendary. This is just a legendary confiscate. Um, same cost, six mana. 
It's an enchantment. You can target any permanent planeswalkers, creatures, lands. Um, and the only difference is this is legendary and the enchanted permanent becomes legendary. So uh, still an amazing card. This card, I hope, will see some play because control magics and, and the like are always fun. Uh, and being able to steal an opponent's planeswalker after they... Like, if it's about to ultimate, this is a great feeling because it's been a long time since we've been about to ultimate a planeswalker for an opponent. And then you just steal it in response, right? Like, we haven't done that in a while in, in Standard, I don't think. Um, additionally, you can steal their Scarab God. So that's pretty cool. Of course, if they kill it, they will get it back. But, I mean, it's a Scarab God. You got to take what you can get. Karn's Temporal Sundering. Six mana. You may cast a legendary sorcery only if you control another legendary creature or planeswalker. I'm surprised this is not mythic. Uh, most time warp effects in the in the present day are mythic. Um, like so, temporal extortion, which I think was in uh, Fate Reforged, was mythic. Uh, Part the Water Veil was mythic. A lot of the cards from recent times were mythic. Even time warp in in M10 was mythic. Uh, so I'm really surprised this is a target player takes an extra turn after this one is is not mythic return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand exile temporal sundering so they all exile as well and um oh temporal mastery the the seven mana one that has miracle that was also mythic so it's interesting and it's a legendary sorcery which is another reason why it kind of feels mythic i don't know why we're going back to time warp effects not being mythic because i think they're one of the most powerful things you can do in magic and I love that card because Turns is literally one of my favorite modern decks. And uh, this is, I don't, I don't know if this is going to, this is not, this is probably not better than Part the Waterville in a Turns deck. This is probably not better than um, well, Walk the Aeons. But it's still good. And I like having the option. Like if you're able to play Karn's Temporal Sun Sundering, bouncing one of their permanents, then play another Karn's Temporal Sundering, bouncing another one of their permanents, that's actually a lot of tempo. So I'm not sure. I, I would love to play this in standard as well, but we'll see. Merfolk Trickster. 2-2 two, two for, for 2 with Flash. That's actually a good rate for a Merfolk. We're already talking pretty pretty competitive stats here. When it enters battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. It loses all abilities until end of turn. I am no man. I'm no Merfolk expert in modern, but this is a card I could see coming into Merfolk decks. Um... Being able to tap a creature they control and it loses all abilities is pretty strong. Plus it has flash. That's also really good. Anytime it costs more than one blue is good. How dare you, Chris? How dare you? Now, this card's good. This card seems great. Uh, also, don't forget that Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan were both Merfolk-based sets. Not Merfolk-based, but they were Merfolk-heavy sets. So this guy definitely has a home to fit into. You got a home, little Merfolk trickster. The Marari Conjecture. Five mana for a rare. Turn comes into play. Return an instant card from your graveyard to your hand. Next turn, return a sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Next turn, whenever you cast an instant or, so instant or sorcery, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. I kind of like this a lot because I want to play this on turn five. On turn seven... On turn five, it triggers the first time. Turn six, it triggers the second time. On turn five, turn seven, it triggers for the third time, and you can copy your uh, temporal sundering. Yeah, let me take two cards. That's pretty strong. A copy effect that doesn't actually that like a delayed copy effect that you don't actually have the mana have to have the mana for when you cast Karn's temporal sundering. That's pretty strong. That's sweet. You can also copy approach. I don't think that works though. Maybe. All right, so let's let's read approach. I just want to make sure this works correctly. If Approach to the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach to the Second Sun this game, it would actually work. You would cast Approach of the Second Sun, right? So you have one copy of Approach that's been cast. Mirari Conjecture casts a second part on top of it. You haven't cast it, though. That doesn't matter. It just says, if you cast another spell named Approach, this game... So this the first one's going to resolve. 
And then you have the second, the original copy that you did cast from your hand, and it says, have you cast another copy of Approach? Okay, you win the game. That's interesting. So can I just play Mirari Conjecture in my Karn's Temporal Sundering Approach deck, and then we can just copy Time Warps and Approach to the Second Sun? Because that seems pretty good. This card seems much better than I thought it would. It's funny because both of the cards we mentioned, Approach of the Second Sun and Karn's Temporal Mastery, have no natural way to get into the graveyard. Karn's Temporal Mastery exiles itself, and Approach of the Second Sun shuffles itself back in, or you know puts itself seven deep. Interesting. Nabon, Dean of Iteration. Two mana for a 2-1 wizard. If a wizard enters the battlefield under your control, it causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger. The ability triggers twice. So, okay. Literally Stephen Strange. Literally Doctor Strange. So that's cool. All right. I mean, it's, it's a two-one for two, right? I don't know if it's great. Naru Miha, Master Wizard for four mana. Mythic, a three-three for four Mythic with Flash. When Naru Miha, Master Wizard, enters the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery you spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. How much mana do they expect you to have to copy something with this Mythic? What up, PS Punk? Other wizards you control get plus one, plus oh, plus one, plus one. So, like, if I want to copy my Karn's Temporal Summoning, which is my go-to, apparently, I have to have 10 mana. If I want to copy Approach, I have to have 11 mana. I mean... I don't know, man. This is expensive. Why is this... This doesn't feel mythic at all. It's literally just Dual Caster Mage that gives you plus one, plus one to your other wizards. I would rather have the Dual Caster Mage for three mana. And that's not even mythic, or that's not even legendary. And yeah, it's only spells you control. So you can't even be like, oh, you're gonna lightning bolt my guy, I'll Naru Mahe to you know to copy it. So that that would make sense because that's mana efficient, right? Like four mana, I'll understand because that's fine. All I have to do is invest four mana. But this is like I have to play a three even if I play a three mana spell, then play a four mana copy it. It's just seven mana? I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's for commander players, but in that case, why is it mythic? Opt. We all know what this guy does. We just saw this in Ixalan. It's a good addition to standard. I like it. Cool. Precognition field. Four mana for a rare. You may look at the top card of your library. I know people who are like, uh, in response to your end step, I'm going to look at the top card of my library. Sounds good. Uh, draw. I'll look at the top card of my library. Just checking. You may cast the top card of your library. If it's an instant or sorcery card... Uh, okay, I kind of like that a lot. Exile the top card of your library. It's pretty good. I can get behind all these things. I think this card's fine. I wish it cost less, but I don't. I can understand why it doesn't cost less. Um, I don't want to spend four mana on this. However, I like the ability a lot. I like that it doesn't cost you mana to look at the top card of your library, so you can always just be like... All right, I know it's there. You know what you're going to draw. You know if you want to crack a fetch land. Uh, you know if you want to crack an evolving wilds. You know if you're going to draw things. And uh, if you are going to draw lands, this is actually pretty solid for a control deck in the late game. Like, you can just look at the top card. If you don't like it, exile it. Exile all those lands. Exile all the stupid cards you don't want and then just draw the good stuff. This is actually pretty interesting. This card, I think this card is better than it looks. And I think in the late game on turn, like, six or eight in a control matchup and you just play this guy for four mana i think you run away with the game at that point this card seems really strong plus you're just getting the free value of all the instants and sorcerers from the top of your deck Relic Runner, 2-1 for 2 mana, 1 and a blue. Relic Runner can't be blocked if you've cast a store spell this turn. Okay. I mean, this is your run-of-the-mill, like, Welkin turn, like, uh, Kite Sail, Free Marauder, whatever the pirate is. Kite Sail Corsair. Like, this is your 2-1 blue card that has evasion, maybe sometimes, with a downside. Okay. Play it in limited. Knock yourself out. Returns target permanent you control to its owner's hand. That is narrow for one mana. Uh, this is a card that someone will ultimately break in, in Vintage. They will return uh, something like a Mox to their hand to increase their storm count and replay it. But, you know, what are you going to do? Or not. I don't know. 
but th I wouldn't be surprised if a one mana card that that returns something to your hand you can replay it with saw some play so sage of latnam two mana for a one two sacrifice an artifact draw a card i don't know why this is uncommon i guess because it was it's i mean eh. i don't know you're trading artifacts for for cards like you're a one two i have to tap you to use this ability I and mean, what is this guy from alliances gotta be from like alliances right homelands antiquities sage of latinam oh look at this original wording here tap to draw a card from your library each time you use this ability you must choose one of your artifacts in play and place it in the graveyard this artifact cannot be one that is already on its way to the graveyard and artifact creatures killed this way cannot be regenerated okay sure nice magic nice 3-3 three, three for 5 with Flash. Sentinel of the Pearl Trident. It is a merfolk, which is a relevant thing. When Sentinel of the Pearl Trident enters the battlefield, you may exile target historic permanent you control. If you do, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So it just blinks a historic permanent. That's interesting because you do have um, sagas. So that's pretty cool. Like, obviously, when it says historic permanent, they're like blinker sagas. But, I mean, being able to just blink a, a, a legendary guy or um, an artifact that has an enters battlefield ability is pretty sweet. So, yeah, again, five mana for a 3-3. Three, three. This can also save a guy. You know, it does have flash. So, I can see this. You're definitely going to play this in limited probably every single time. Because it's still a 3-3 three, three flash guy for five, which is a fine rate. Uh, it does save planes. It resets planeswalkers as well. That's actually pretty good. I keep forgetting legendaries or planeswalkers because that's a very new change. Either way, this card is interesting. I don't think you're going to pay five mana for it in constructed, but I will probably put it at least one in all my limited decks. Slin Voda, the Rising Deep. What magic throwback set would not be complete without a Leviathan in it? It's eight mana for an eight eight. Uh, kicker for two. When Slin Voda, the Rising Deep, enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return all creatures to their hands except for Merfolk. Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. That is a lot of sea people. Sea creatures. So you get an 8-8 eight, eight for 8, or you get a 8-8 eight, eight for 10 that bounces everything in the that isn't in the ocean. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Avid Fiction Out. That is a, that is a painting by Rene Magritte. It is called uh, Son of Man. But I, I do appreciate that it looks a lot like the Memoirs of an Invisible Man. I think that's actually deliberate. Um, no, so this this card is not an infinite combo with Sahili because it says return the card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So they actually did, they fixed it. It's a fixed, like, Restoration Angel. Or a fixed, you know, Feldar Guardian because it doesn't do it immediately, so you can't just blink everything. Um... So, thankfully, no. Syncopate. Your classic uh, blue, blue and X counterspell. Uh, if it spells countered like this, you get exiled instead of uh, putting it in the graveyard. This counter, this card's great. You're, you're going to play this in your control decks. I wish it was Condescend. Condescend is a card that hasn't seen play in a long time in Standard, whereas Syncopate was literally just reprinted in Return to Ravnica. Let's make sure. Syncopate was in Odyssey and Return to Ravnica. I don't think Condescend was ever printed in Standard outside of 5th Dawn. Nope, it was not. It was in two dual, de dual decks and Iconic Masters, but no Syncopate for Standard anymore, guys. Synco is very good. I mean, or, uh, uh, I think Condescend is very good. I think Scrying 2 is, is stronger than Exiling Spell, but... This guy's interesting. If you play this guy on turn three, it is Serendibi Freet, which I can see that's probably what they're going for. 3-3 uh, three, three for 3-4 three, on, on turn three. Uh, that's, if you, that's if you cast it with all islands, but, I mean, you're probably... You're not playing this guy if you're not having an abundance of islands. So, um... Yeah, but this guy just gets bigger on turn five, turn six. You get a 6-4 flyer for three mana on, on turn six if you're playing mono blue. Or if you're playing, like, a modern deck uh, with only, like, steam vents or... Hmm. How many dual lands? How many multicolor basic like 
How many how many dual lands are there that you can fetch with uh There's two allied there's three there's two allied colors, aren't there? Outside of the original chalk lands, there's the uh the cycle ones and there's the check lands, right? Where you have if you have two basics that come into play tapped. But those are both allied cycles. So there's no red blue cycle land and there's no red blue uh check land, right? That's interesting. I, I feel like those are those are those are past due. Either way, this card is interesting. It's very, very narrow, but I think in the decks it it, it's, it does well in, it's going to be very good. So, we'll see. Tetsuko Umizawa Fugitive. 1, 3, 4, 2. Uh, creatures you control with power or toughness, one or less, can't be blocked. Uh, this card's... Pretty interesting. This also can't be blocked, so I can see you doing some shenanigans with this card. It is uncommon, though, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there was some... I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking with this card. It's a 1-3. It's 2 mana. It seems fine. Hold on one second. All right, Time of Ice. We have uh, four mana uncommon. Tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control this. So on turn one, you tap the dude. Oh, it only counts basic islands? That is worse. But this is, this, this is, the, this is the blue rare uh, that costs three of its color, right? So there was the triple white guy that was a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, so basic islands. Good, good catch, good catch. My bad. Uh, I was probably already getting yelled at on YouTube. But uh, now I'm going to go check the comment that they left. That I, I get a notification in the email. Hey, you dummy. This is only Basic Islands. I go to check it. And by the time I go to check it, it's deleted because they've, uh, they realized that I caught it. Or you guys caught it. And, and then you, you told me about it. So I'm glad we got through this together. Uh, Carvaggio, you can attack with a creature that has less, wait, less than one toughness. Uh, you can't. Less than one power. Creatures with power or... Oh, it's just saying one or less, right? It's not saying... Okay, so here's the interesting thing someone else brought up to me. Ball Lightning, for example, has has toughness one or less, right? So you can play Ball Lightning, and it's unblockable with, with Tetsuko Omizawa in play. So that's interesting. Um, it's not saying you can have a creature with toughness zero or less. For the sake of brevity on the card, to save space, they're just including power and toughness with one or less. Um, that's not to imply that a, a creature will ever have a toughness of zero, but it's just so it can lump it into the, the, um, the power, like the same, the, the same sentence. Okay. Back to the time of ice. So it comes into play. You tap a guy. It stays tapped. Turn two, you tap a guy, another guy. It stays tapped. Two guys are staying tapped. Turn three, you return all tap creatures to, the, to their owner's hands. This is actually pretty good, but four mana is a little expensive. Like if this came down on turn three, if this came down on turn two, it'd be busted, right? Because you're just like resetting the board after turn two. If it costs three, maybe, but four might be the only spot this is actually good without being really overpowered. Like a blue deck being able to go like, all right, tap your one guy. Even if they have one guy, this is going to prevent them from playing a guy on the next turn because you're just going to tap that one too. So I, this card seems really interesting to me. It's almost like a one-sided evacuation that's like, I'll wait. I'll wait so you can play some more guys, and then we'll bounce them all. Yeah, I don't know. This card seems good. Talarian Scholar. A 2-3 three, for 3 mana. Okay. Unwind. This card is great, and I'm scared of it because, boy, why do we still print cards to do this? 3 mana. Counter target non-creature spell. Untap up to 3 lands. So this is a negate that costs one more, but you untap up to three lands. Cool. That's great. I want to unwind, untap three lands, and then pl either play a creature at the end of the turn or draw some cards at the end of their turn. I want to do something. But like being able to untap three lands is... <sighs> Boy, I, I feel like we should have learned a lesson from free spells like this, but here we are. Here we are. 
Vodalian Arcanist. Add a... It's a 1-3 for 2. You can add a colorless. Spend this mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell. This is not terrible. I would, I, would, I feel like this should be... Um, this should be uncommon, but... You know, add a, add a... You know, I mean, this is... This is just a 1-3 for 2 Merfolk Wizard, so it's actually two of the relevant tribes in the set. Rewind isn't broken. This can't be much better. Um, I can't tell if you're being serious. Rewind was actually very, very strong in it today. Um, weight of Memory. Five mana for a sorcery. Draw three cards. Target player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. This is not where I want to be. Tidings is just a better card than this, right? I don't care about milling my opponent for three. Um, what I care about is drawing more cards or drawing them at instant speed. So if this is if this is Jace's ingenuity and I could do it at instant speed, or if this is Tidings and I'm drawing one extra card. Oh, okay, Vast Games. I wasn't sure if you were being serious or not. Um, because <laughs> Rewind was busted. You could just be like, Rewind, untap all my lands. You, you're good? All right, I'll Sphinx is Revelation for a million. All right, cool. Um, this card, I, I think there's going to be better card drawing. I think there already is. I'd still rather play Glimmer of Genius over this. So... I don't know. You're going to play this in limited. In limited, this is just going into your mill deck. It's going into any of your blue decks anyway. Whatever. Wizard's Retort. Counter target spell for three mana. This spell costs one less to be control the wizard. This is actually great. I love the flavor of this card. I love that it's just a cancel with upside. What counter spells aren't in standard nowadays. Um, Rewind wasn't very good last time around. When was the last time Rewind was even printed? Ninth edition? Oh, Magic 2013? Really? I'm pretty sure it was in all of the control decks in Magic 2013. I I'm not positive, but I do remember that that being a thing. Um either way, this card is interesting. Um You know, costing two mana. Yeah, Ryan Ryan seemed like it was great in 2013. I I I think I remember that vividly. Um the spell costs one less, so it's two mana for... Obviously, this is just a counter spell for two mana if you have a wizard, which is which is so such great flavor. Like, that's wizards. That's Magic the Gathering right there, right? Like, I have a wizard. Now I have an old school counter spell. Super cool. Yeah, that's exactly where I took the, the Rewind Sphinx's Revelation from, I think. That's exactly what I was thinking. Um, if that was... If those were the set, I think that's what I'm thinking of, but... Uh, Zahid, Dijin of the Lamp. This is one of the, like, the uh, representative cards for the set. Like, you, you saw this guy in a lot of places. Six mana for a 5-6. Obviously, for a, fl for a flying Dijin. Obviously, hearkening to Mahamodi Dijin. A very classic 5-6 flyer in Magic's history. Um, but we're like, hey, you're, not gonna, you're never going to play a Mahamodi Dijin. Let's make it a real creature that says you may pay four mana and tap an untapped artifact you control. Which is really good. A 5-6 flyer for four mana and tapping an artifact... That's great. This guy will probably see play in constructed if there is a if there's a home for this guy. This guy is good enough to 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 see some constructed play. And um that's a good rate, I think. I mean, it's on part with it's on part with like so, like like look at something like Desecration Demon, right? Um where it's a 6/6 six, six flyer, but it has a really big drawback of like if you can make tokens, it's never attacking, right? And it also costs double double black. This costs one blue if you have an artifact out, which is a lot easier on the mana. And uh, there's no awkward upkeep. You can just attack with it every turn. So, I mean, Desecration Demon, Abyssal Persecutor, those are all creatures that saw play in their respective standard formats. And I don't see why this also wouldn't see play for those same reasons. So, And that's it. All right, that was the blue cards. I think blue looks pretty sweet. There's a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of sort of subtle cards that have a lot more strength than they than they may look like. Cards that historically might not have been strong, but uh, take a role in this set that is actually stronger than you'd expect. Like a like a tap creature, tap creature, bounce a guy, you know, stuff like that. Um, but either way, the blue seems pretty sweet. Uh, Dominary is looking good. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Be sure to check out the uh, rest of the set review that I put up all this week and uh, smash those like and subscribe buttons if you like the content. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.